Hello, everyone. Hopefully, third time is the charm. First time I got COVID when I tried to do this uh, banana smoothies thing. And then just today, tried to do it as part of a live Q&A, and technologically, it all failed. So, although, unfortunately, this won't be live, won't be able to take questions, but I will get this information out there. Um, and so hopefully this will work. Fingers crossed. All right. Okay, well, so the, the first part of this will sound familiar. Who were watching on YouTube or Facebook until it all collapsed. But now you'll actually be able to see the PDFs, hopefully, actually see the studies that I'm talking about. Okay. We all know there are recommended daily intakes of essential nutrients like vitamins to prevent deficiencies. But recently, hopefully you can see that. But recently, the first dietary recommendation for a bioactive food compound was published. Bioactive food compounds, as you can see in green here, um, are not necessary for basic human needs, but may have health benefits. For example, these plant metabolites here in red, known as flavonoids. Flavonoids are a type of polyphenol, which are uh, which of which the most commonly consumed one is these flavin threols, also known as just flavanols. A, a review of the literature here up in blue um, uh, suggests that intake of 400 to 600 milligrams a day of these flavanols will be beneficial for cardiovascular protection, such as here in red, uh, potential for improving blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugars, right? Uh, now note here in gray um, that this is specifically a food guideline, not a supplement guideline, though really it's actually more like a beverage guideline since if you look at the, uh, to zoom out a little bit there, um, uh, if you look at the primary sources, it's really a tea, green or black is the easiest way to reach those levels, though there's certainly some in a variety of berries and cocoa. However, dun, 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 there's an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase that can break down these wonderful polyphenols like flavonoids. That is what makes certain fruits and vegetables, as you can see here in, in green, brown when you cut them, uh, such as bananas and potatoes, now, why would a plant do that to itself? Well, apparently it is um, a defense mechanism. Um, it's part of the plant's immune system, as you can see there in orange. Um, uh, and uh, when exposed to oxygen, um, what happens is that polyphenol oxidase can oxidize polyphenols into these breakdown products which have antimicrobial activity. So when a banana gets bruised, for example, uh, they're in gray, you cut, or you cut open an avocado or something, the polyphenol oxidase can start oxidizing polyphenols into these defensive compounds that can glom together here in red, um, forming a dark compound called melanin. Uh, the same class of compounds that darkens the skin of banana also darkens our skin too. Okay, so no problem. We can just not eat bananas that have turned brown, right? Because that's visual evidence that many of the polyphenols have been lost. Ah, but what if you mix that banana, which you know is filled with that polyphenol oxidase enzyme, in a smoothie with polyphenol-rich foods like berries or cocoa? Might that might that, and that why you end up with less nutrition. Well, big chocolate funded researchers sought to find out. And so what they did is they put a, about a half cup of cocos worth of cocoa flavanols uh, into, in a banana containing smoothie compared to the same amount in a berry smoothie with no banana. So here is a measure. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so here, um, is a measure of how many cocoa flavanols make it into your bloodstream um, within hours, one, two, three, four, five, six hours after 
eating uh, the chocolatey berry smoothie compared to the same amount of cocoa blended into a banana smoothie, right? So the same amount of those cocoa goodies, but it's almost as if there was no cocoa in there at all, presumably because the banana enzymes chopped up all the chocolate goodies. Um, let's not presume, though. Um, they blended up that uh, chocolatey banana smoothie again, um, which was just uh, banana, almond milk, cocoa flavanols. And then they just measured the level of flavanols as the smoothie sat for an hour. Check it out. That is what happened. The cocoa flavanols plummeted more than 90%, a half-life of about uh, 10, hour, uh, 10 minutes. Um, uh, so, uh, so every 10 minutes, the levels of polyphenols drop in half. Now, how do we know it was for sure it was this polyphenol oxidase enzyme? Because then if you add um, uh, various polyphenol inhibitors, um then uh what um uh then uh then they block the effect okay so no problem if you add bananas to your smoothies just you have to chug them down before the enzyme does its job right i mean presumably the enzyme would be deactivated when it hit the acid bath of our stomach but you don't know until you Put it to the test. And I love that the researchers did all this, all these extra steps here. Uh, so here you are in, in, in green here. What they did is this time they had study participants um, uh, alternate sips. Alternate sips uh, between a straight banana almond milk smoothie um, and like chocolate milk, chocolate flavonoids plus the almond milk, right? So there was no pre-mixing uh, in the blender between the banana enzyme and the flavanols, just mixing in the stomach. Uh, such such kind of an elegant research move. Okay, so here's how many cocoa flavanols. Here we go. Here's how many cocoa flavanols. Make it in your bloodstream um, uh, sipping the uh, chocolate milk alone. Um, here with these kind of brown, greenish brown uh, 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 little um, data here. Um, uh, and then here is when it's mixing just in the stomach uh, when you're alternating sips with a banana smoothie. Um, and so uh, that you get 37% less in your bloodstream showing that the banana enzyme can still do some polyphenol damage in your stomach um it's uh, starting to get dark and so my screen's gonna start to yellow because i cut out that the blue blocker um a blue bark effect but i just turned that off so we should be good okay um and indeed um in a simulated stomach acid um in a uh, in kind of simulated stomach acid conditions um yes the polyphenol oxidase um is indeed down but not out okay so, yeah, um, if you uh, drink some uh, smoothie with a banana and it's better not to let it sit around, but even if you drink it immediately, you can get less polyphenols in your system than if you had skipped the banana. All right. But bananas make smoothies so rich and creamy. I mean, anything we can add to the smoothie to counter the banana enzymes effects that's exactly what I'll cover next, but not really next because that's what I would have said in a video, but we're all going to be covering right here, right now. Um, actually, it's uh, let me turn down that light a little bit. Um, two, two, two. Oh, it's not showing up. All right. That's okay. It's okay. All right. Um, uh, let me just take a few seconds though, uh, before I continue. Um, with the story to ask for your help. Um, we usually made this a YouTube fundraiser, but now it's not really on YouTube. But um, uh, if you're watching this on nutritionfacts.org um, uh, and you find this valuable, please consider making a tax-deductible donation to support this wonderful work. 
Um, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so, uh, as a kind of end of year show of thanks, uh, we, you know, we don't accept money from food companies or supplement companies or, you know, the, the kitchen gizmo companies or anything like that, just individual donors like you. So thank you so much for your support. Okay. Back to our regularly scheduled program. There's one food that has even more polyphenol oxidase activities in banana, and it's a vegetable that's not a potato. What vegetable turns brown that's not a white potato? All right, let's go look. Okay, do, 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 20. Um, let's find out. Aha, here we go. So here's polyphenols. Uh, polyphenol oxidase activity in various fruits and vegetables and oh, white mushrooms. White button mushrooms, as you can see, have more polyphenol uh, um, uh, um, oxidase activity than even bananas. Now, for those of you thinking, uh, don't worry, I don't think I am expect to be adding any mushrooms into my smoothies anytime soon, now, some people do add avocados um, to smoothies um, or make like a chocolate avocado pudding. And here's a question. What if you eat mushrooms with a meal packed with polyphenol-rich foods, right? Might it mix in your stomach and decrease the absorption like the anthocyanins in red cabbage or berries for dessert, right? Um, and uh, look, you could also be having some potatoes with your meal or eggplant. Um, with your meal, which also, as you can see, contains it. Um, uh, now, note, though, however, this is for fresh produce, right? So, you know, we're not worrying about the eggplant potatoes. Um, and uh, the enzyme is utterly destroyed by cooking. So this is uh, inactivation of the mushroom uh, polyphenol oxidase enzyme. And as you can see, um, uh, it uh, plummets readily. Um, uh, and look, remember, we should be cooking our mushrooms anyway, right? Because of the guarantee, most of our mushrooms, uh, you don't have to cook oyster mushrooms, but the white and criminy and portobello mushrooms, right? So problem solved, right? The, uh, you know, so you don't have to worry about cooked potatoes, cooked eggplant, cooked mushrooms. Okay. Uh, but who wants to cook their bananas though, right? What else could we put in a smoothie instead my personal favorite is mango, which you can buy frozen when it's not in season. Uh, do we have to worry about that, having a polyphenol eating enzymes? Well, what happens when you cut open a mango? Does it go brown? No, it doesn't go brown, which should show you um, exactly um, uh, what this data uh, shows here. And that is 30. Uh, if you look... Um, that um, mango right here has, oh, maybe 500 times less than that banana. This is polyphenol oxidase that, um, in activity. This is the activity of that enzyme that destroys polyphenols like flavonoids, right? Now, the apple certainly doesn't, um, uh, doesn't uh, surprise me, right? Because what, what happens with apples turns brown. But what is with this beet greens? I did not know about that. So if you're making a green smoothie, better to use something like kale, which has enzyme levels so low, they're below the level of detection. Okay. Um, uh, but boy, the smoothie study raises so many interesting questions, right? So uh, what, uh, forget smoothies. Should you not add bananas to your oatmeal, right? Because the bananas in your stomach would mix with like the berries or the cocoa that you put in your oatmeal. Um, and indeed... Um, that is what we should expect. So I no longer add bananas to my cran chocolate pomegranate breakfast bowl. Um, that was one of my uh, cooking videos, if you missed it. Um, uh, and uh, since, you know, I don't want to lose any of those polyphenols. There's so many wonderful ingredients in that. I don't want to lose any. Don't want any of those destroyed. That 37% decrease in your stomach um, when it all mixes with that enzyme. Okay, but what if you're not making something chocolatey the um this study 
were only tested the effects of the enzyme on cocoa flavanols. Like they didn't check to see if like mixing bananas with berries would affect the berry phytonutrients, but the presumption is that it would. Um, and so, hmm, what does that mean for like ready to drink bottled smoothie drinks that you might find in the store, right? That may be sitting on the shelf. Well, if it's been pasteurized, then it should be okay, right? Because the heat destroys that enzyme. Uh, that's why vegetables are blanched, uh, you know, before they're frozen to destroy the enzymes. Even just heating uh, bananas to 70, let me see table two. Two, 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 that's figure two. I'm looking for, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two, two, two. Uh, okay. Um, so here we're in this is inactivation methods for that enzyme bananas, even just heating um, in here. We're looking at the T2 data right here. Um, even just heating banana to like 70 degrees C, which is like hot tea, 70 degrees Celsius for two minutes in the presence of vitamin C and citric acid, which might come from lemon juice, for example, would suppress the enzyme by 80%. I'm not suggesting drinking hot smoothies, but rather that those pasteurized smoothie drinks, depending on the ingredients, may not have the same problem as fresh made smoothies. Uh, what about just the adding the vitamin C and citric acid alone, like putting lemon juice in your smoothie? That is the T1. Oh, here, let me move this over. That's the T1 data here. Um, and as you can see, it only cuts the enzyme activity by about 13% without the heating step. However, it does work wonders for apples. So um, as you can see here, um, a, uh, a cut apple, um, you just add some lemon juice and you can cut that activity nearly in half, um, uh, explaining why adding lemon juice to your fruit salad, you know, keeps the apples in your fruit salad from turning brown. Okay, anything we can add to a banana smoothie to inhibit the enzyme so we can still use bananas but somehow block the enzyme? Well, they used to put, um, bu -bu -bu beans. So blue. there we go. They used to put sulfites in fresh fruits and vegetables to block that enzyme until they were banned in 1986. Uh, following cases of sulfite-induced asthma. They are still used in dried fruit, though, to prevent browning. The apricots on the left um, are sulfured with sulfites, and the ones on the right are not. Um, it's purely cosmetic. You want to get the unsulfured, so you don't have to worry about uh, sulfite-induced respiratory problems. What? Um, so, okay, sulfites are kind of off the table, um, but what about other, what about natural agents? What can we do for natural anti-browning agents to block this puppy? Well, as you can see in orange there, onion extracts can prevent the browning of, of, uh, of pears. Uh, and then you see in, in gray, both fresh and cooked onion juice um, both work, but there has got to be something better for your smoothies. And indeed, Pineapple juice, as you can see in, in, in purple there, does seem to help keep apples from browning. Um, and bananas too, uh, for that matter. But that was after soaking in pineapple juice for three days. So it's not clear if it would work right away. Um, there was a study um, uh, here underlined in yellow um, comparing lemon juice and white wine to prevent browning in pastry dough. Uh, you've heard of hard cider, hard seltzer. Well, the lemon juice, it appears, um, beat out the wine. So uh, better a lemon squeeze than drinking a hard smoothie. Anyway, okay. So that's the, uh, let me stop sharing here. That's the story on bananas and smoothies. So should you not eat bananas? No, you can eat bananas anytime. You just don't want to eat bananas. You just want to have the bananas in your stomach at the same time you have other healthy foods like berries, cocoa, tea. Um, and so, but like as a snack on its own, totally fine. Uh, but uh, smoothie aside, still, um, you could uh, you, you could impair some of the, um, uh, you could destroy some of the phytonutrients if you had it in your stomach at the same time as a meal and same thing with uh 
you know, uh, uncooked mushrooms and some of those other things. Oh, like the 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 avocado. Um, anyway, I'm sure this raises lots of questions, and I was hoping to take lots of questions today. That was before the the tech disaster, but uh, certainly be happy to answer next time I do Q and A. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for everyone who decided to support us this year. Um, this will actually this topic will actually be up in actual video on nutritionfacts.org, all polished and fancy. Um, but didn't want to wait for you to get this important information. Have a good night.